Hi everybody, I'm Terry Windsor and welcome to Info to Know. There's something about the Cascadia subduction zone that most people are not aware of and it is not good. So the Cascadia subduction zone is a place in the Pacific Northwest where they're expecting that 9.0 mega quake with a possible 500 foot tsunami to strike at any given time. And it starts here in Cape Mendocino, California, goes up through Oregon, Washington, up through the northern tip of Vancouver Island. Actually, Cascadia used to go through the Hayduguay Islands, formerly known as Queen Charlotte, and up through the Alaska Panhandle, all the way up to Skagway, that included Juneau. But through research, they decided, by the way that the earthquakes were, to exclude the Alaska Panhandle and the Haida Gwaii. Um, but the weird thing is, is that there's a tent of people that think that the Haida Gwaii and Alaska should still be in the Cascadia subduction zone because the strain of these earthquakes goes and carries to the Cascadia subduction zone. But we'll see where that should end up one day. Anyways, I found something quite disturbing about this area and I figured I would share it with you. So let me show you what I found. Dangerous offshore quake zone severely under monitored seismologists say. That is not comforting words in an area where they're expecting a massive earthquake and tsunami. But let's hear what this gentleman Harold Tobin has to say. Faults will start showing us signals before the earthquake occurs, things we would call precursors to the earthquake. Harold Tobin is the director of the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network at UW. He says the giant fault line offshore is severely under monitored. That's why he and other scientists submitted a proposal this month to get four new sensors offshore of Oregon, each drilled a thousand feet below the seafloor. That would actually potentially be a way to predict in advance that an earthquake is more likely. We don't have that ability now, but this kind of data could help us generate that ability. The recent proposal was submitted to an agency called the International Ocean Drilling Program. The U.S. is a big supporter of this organization. This project will likely take several stages, millions of dollars, and many years to be completed if it's even approved in the first place. Harold says this proposal is just the start. They want to add dozens more monitors along the West Coast after this. Certainly, it will help us do a better job of early warning when the earthquake starts. Now, because this video was from 2019, I contacted the PNSN to see if they had gotten their funding in the past four years. The answer is no, they did not. Big surprise. They don't find funding for that, but they found funding for smart toilet cams. It's a thing. It takes pictures of your ass. You'd be happy to know that each and every one of us has 35 to 37 unique creases in our behinds. They're called anal prints. It's a thing. Or how crickets mate. Funding for that. But in a place that they're expecting a disaster that's going to displace millions and kill thousands, they can't find any money for that? That is appalling that our tax dollars are wasted the way they are. But luckily for the U.S., oh, Canada does care about their people and they do have funding and they do have ocean bottom seismometers in the Cascadia. And I'm going to show you that right now. This is actually a picture of Ocean Networks Canada lowering a seismometer into the ocean off the coast of Vancouver Island. You can see how huge this really is. If you look at these two guys here, well, you get the picture. Very, very large. So this is from a vert and this is from June of 2023. This is actually a photo of an ocean bottom seismometer from Ocean Networks Canada on the ocean floor of the Cascadia subduction zone. So it says, in the coming months, Ocean Networks Canada earthquake early warning system will officially launch after years of development to become among the most advanced of its kind. The unique system uses 35 underwater and land seismic sensor sites to determine an earthquake's location, magnitude, and when the ground shaking will begin. The system monitors the seismically active Cascadia subduction zone. 
The ONC Earthquake Early Warning System comprises 35 sites onshore and offshore, each with at least one accelerometer, which measures, measures vibration. The sites are about 20 to 30 kilometers from each other, and most have multiple instruments for redundancy. Having more instruments than needed increases the chance of system functioning after a damaging earthquake. That is really good thinking. Perrin says their earthquake early warning system is unique from comparable systems in three ways. First, it's one of the only two in the world to include underwater seismic sensors. The other is used by Japan. Locating sensors underwater allows them to be as near as possible to offshore epicenters, maximizing the time available between detection of the quake's primary waves underwater and the ground shaking waves felt on land. So what they want is the second that the Cascadia moves on the sea floor, they want to know now because it gives them more warning that way. And as you'll see, the ONC system is now working effectively in real life situations. On April 13th this year, it detected a quake within the Explorer plate near the Neptune Observatory. The system notified about the ground shaking waves 89 seconds before they were felt in major West Coast cities. That's the 5.7 that occurred in April off the coast of Vancouver Island. So that is, you know, that's almost a minute and a half, shy of one second. Hey. And then they say... And our Canada said in a news release that if an earthquake similar to the 1700 megthrust quake occurred today, the early warning system could provide up to four minutes of warning before the strongest shaking begins for people living near the opposite end of the subduction zone. With four minutes, many lives might be saved. Four minutes is a lot of time better compared to no time warning. So this is going to be good because they are sharing this with the U.S. They partnered uh, one of the reasons was because Canada likes the USGS's earthquake early warning system software. And because we're neighbors, we look out for each other better than our government does look out for us. One thing for sure, y'all better hope that when the Cascadia does hit, that it starts at the northern end over in the Vancouver Island area where all the bottom sensors are so that you get the most warning because you're going to need it. If it starts in the southern end, not good, not good. Now, with that being said, I do have to give a huge amount of credit to the PNSN, and I'll show you why. This is a map of the PNSN seismic stations, and there are over 300 of them that they've had installed over the years, which is amazing. They've done a lot with the funding they have been able to get. And as you can see, they've got the entire coastline of the Cascadia subduction zone very fully monitored and also the volcanoes in the cascades as well which that is no easy task because they have to fight the 1964 wilderness act which doesn't allow for things like helicopters or heavy machinery in anywhere near these places and they have to have those because the equipment is very heavy very bulky and there's a lot of it the batteries themselves weigh like 80 pounds and a lot of these take 10 batteries. Now they have all the volcanoes fully monitored except for Glacier Peak. They just finally, after four years of fighting this wilderness act, got permission from the forestry service to add three more seismometers to Glacier Peak that only has one. But so far I haven't seen them able to install them yet. Hopefully they will. Anyways, um, the reason that I did this video is because I think a lot of people have a false sense of security due to the earthquake early warning system that's in place, which is an amazing system. But they do not realize that this area here is completely not monitored at all. And, you know, they want that very moment when the seafloor lifts because they get an extra minute or more, depending on where you live from the epicenter. And that's essential to you guys. You know, and as I've said before, you better hope like heck that when this Cascadia quake does hit, that it hits in the northern and in the Vancouver Island area because Canada has their ocean bottom seismometers. But also, too, you know, one of the other problems, I think, is that a lot of people keep hearing, well, it's not going to be for another 50 years and the average is, you know, 500 years. Well, that's not totally true. Let me show you this. 
This is the last 10,000 years of the megaquakes that have hit in Cascadia. Now, when you get down to the last 2,000 years, you can see that these earthquakes have come much closer together. As a matter of fact, 8.0s are averaging every 200 years, and we are well past 200 years. And the 8.5s are averaging 333 years, which we're coming up on. I mean, we're at 323 years now since the last major quake. But we are dealing with nature, and nature doesn't keep a schedule, and there are no averages. The other problem is they don't know that back in 1700, if Cascadia released all the energy, so it could have much more stored up than they even know. So there's a, quite a few things that are still unknown. Anyways, that's what I wanted you guys to know, and uh, that's about it for today. So thank you so much. This is Terry Windsor signing out.